Section 7.3 is solving trigonometric equations. So figuring out what theta would make these equations true. Sometimes they will give you a specific domain, like here we want just thetas between 0 and 2 pi. Other times they will say on all real numbers. So what we're looking for is what angle would make this equation true. So cosine equal to 1 half, where between 0 and 2 pi, what angle gives you a cosine ratio of 1 half? So remember cosine is x over r. We're on the unit circle, so r is just equal to 1. So where do we have an x-coordinate of 1 half? So that means it's going to be positive, so it's going to be in quadrants 1 or 4. And x 1 half is the over 3s. So we're going to have theta to be either pi over 3 or 5 pi over 3. So between 0 and 2 pi, these two angles give you cosine of theta to equal 1 half. So now we want to solve the equation 2 sine of theta plus root 3 equals 0 for thetas between 0 and 2 pi. So when you're doing one like this, you want to isolate the sine of theta just like you would any other variable. So go ahead and pause the video and isolate sine of theta. So if you subtract root 3 from both sides and then divide by 2, you get sine of theta is equal to negative root 3 over 2. So again, thinking about the unit circle, where in the unit circle between 0 and 2 pi do you have sine, which the ratio for sine is y over r, with r in your unit circle being equal to 1. Where in your unit circle is your y coordinate equal to negative root 3 over 2? So if your y coordinate is negative root 3 over 2, it's negative, that means it's in quadrants 3 or 4. And then if it's a root 3 over 2, that means it's going to be an over 3. So you have either 4 pi over 3 or 5 pi over 3. Sometimes there's going to be more than just a theta inside the trig function. First, you want to do the same thing we did on the previous ones and isolate in the trig function itself. So in this case, the sine of 2 theta is by itself, so it's already isolated. So then we can treat this just like this was just a theta inside. The only difference is we want to expand our domain because we're not looking for theta anymore. We're looking at twice theta. Since we're looking at twice theta, I'm going to double our domain, our interval that we're looking on, because this is telling me I want to go around the circle twice. So instead of just going around the circle once from 0 to 2 pi, I'm going to go around the circle two times. So I'm going to go from 0 to 2 pi, excuse me, 4 pi. So now we want to look at all the angles between 0 and 4 pi where sine of theta is equal to 1 half. So again, ignore the 2 theta for now. And we just want to know, where does sine equal 1 half? So the first place that sine equals 1 half is pi over 6. And the second place that sine equals 1 half is 5 pi over 6. So these are all the angles between 0 and 2 pi, where sine of an angle equals 1 half. But we don't want to go just between 0 and 2 pi. We want to go between 0 and 4 pi because of this double angle. So I'm going to go around the circle again. I'm going to add 2 pi to my pi over 6. So this is also equal to, sine is also equal to 1 half at 13 pi over 6. Similarly, I'm going to do the same thing with the 5 pi over 6. I'm going to add 2 pi to that. So sine of theta is equal to 1 half also at 17 pi over 6. But the inside of this is not equal to theta. It's equal to 2 theta. So our angle these four angles between 0 and 4 pi are where sine equals 1 half. But I'm not solving for 2 theta. I want to just solve for theta. So just like you would if this was a 2x is equal to something, I'm going to now divide everything by 2 to get theta by itself. So now when I'm dividing by 2, by two to get theta by itself, I'm going back into this original interval here. And so theta is equal to these four angles, pi over 12, which is pi over 6 divided by 2, 5 pi over 12, 13 pi over 12, and 17 pi over 12. All four of these angles are between 0 and 2 pi. If we had not expanded our interval here, we would have been missing two angles because we would not have included these. So anytime you have something included to your theta, you need to do that to your interval before you start looking for your angles. So here we have the tangent of theta minus pi over 2 is equal to 1. So first, before you solve this, I want you to find your new interval that you're going to look for angles on. So look at what's been done to your theta inside your trig function, and do the same thing to your interval.
So in here I have a theta minus pi over 2. So instead of looking for theta, I'm going to look for theta minus pi over 2, which means I'm going to subtract pi over 2 from each part of my interval. So now when I go to solve this first step, I'm going to be looking at the angles in this interval here. So tangent's already by itself, so go ahead and solve for theta. So tangent is equal to 1. We want to know our tangent of an angle is equal to 1. So since this is 1, tangent is y over x, which means that your x and y coordinates are exactly the same and the same sign. So that would be first and third quadrants at the over 4s. So I want to find the first and third quadrants over 4s that are between negative pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So first quadrant, that would be pi over 4, and that's in the correct interval, and 5 pi over 4, which is also in the correct interval. But that's not equal to theta, that's equal to what's inside the trig function, which is theta minus pi over 2. So then I need to add pi over 2 to both sides, so on this side you're just left with theta. On this side you get pi over 4 plus pi over 2, which is 3 pi over 4, and 5 pi over 4 plus pi over 2, which, seven, which is 7 pi over 4. And then these are in our original interval of 0 to 2 pi. So now we're doing, moving on to a different type. Before everything, we could just solve for the trig function. You just had one trig function. You could solve for that, and you could find your angle from there. Now we have a little bit more. We have some squared trig functions, and we have multiple, so we can't just get one trig function by itself. So here, kind of what I want you guys thinking, if first of all we have the same trig function here, which you always need, so if there's not the same trig function, you'll have to use some form of identities. But here we do have the same trig function and it's been squared. Whenever you see something that's been squared and a linear term and a constant term, your brain should be thinking quadratic formula or quadratic equation, something similar to a quadratic. So we have something very similar to a quadratic. Whenever we solve a quadratic, we always want one side to equal zero. So just like we would if these signs were just x's, I added the one to both sides. Now, back in when we were doing exponentials, we did something similar with exponentials. I'm going to let a be sine of theta. So we can look at this a little bit closer. So now we have 2 sine of theta squared, so that's going to be a squared, minus 3 times sine of theta, theta so that's negative 3a, plus 1 is equal to 0. And now if I asked you to solve for a, you would go through your normal quadratic. So go ahead and pause the video and factor this. So when you factor this, you end up with 2a minus 1 times a minus 1 is equal to 0. So now solve for a. So if you set one e each one equal to 0 using the zero product property, you end up with 2a minus 1 equals 0, or a equals 1 half. And then you get a minus 1 equals 0, or a equals 1. But we're not solving for a, we're solving for theta. So I'm going to re-replace our sine of a's excuse me, our a's with sine of thetas. So you get sine of theta equals 1 half or sine of 1, sine of theta is equal to 1, excuse me. So now this looks like the ones that we've already done. So go ahead and solve sine of theta equal to 1 half and sine of theta equal to 1 between 0 and 2 pi. Solve for theta. So between 0 and 2 pi, sine of theta equals a half. Sine is your y coordinate. So y equals a half at pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, and y equals 1, or sine of theta equals 1, at theta equals pi over 2. So whenever you see something quadratic, first of all, make sure you have the same trig function all the way through. We did here, so we set one side equals 0, and then we treated it just like a quadratic. If you do replace your sine of thetas with some other variable, make sure you do replace them back at the end so that you're solving for theta. So this one's very similar to the previous one we did. The first step we want to do is make sure we have the same trig function all the way through, which it fails at this step. We have a cosine here, and we have a sine squared over here. So we want to make sure that we get the same trig function, so we're going to have to use some identities to be able to get this to be the same trig function all the way through. We have an identity right now. We have one for squared trig functions, and in the coming sections we'll have a couple others for squared trig functions. So we have this Pythagorean identity that says the sine squared of theta plus the cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. So we're going to use this and replace our sine squared of theta with something with cosine squareds of theta.
So we have this Pythagorean identity sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, but I want to get rid of sine squared. So I solved this for sine squared, and I said that if sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1, that means that sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. So I then replace sine squared in my original equation with a 1 minus cosine squared. So now we have a quadratic with the same trig function all the way through. Go ahead and pause the video and solve this the same way we did the previous one. Set one side equal to zero, you're going to have to distribute this too, and then solve, factor, solve for cosine. So I distribute the two here, and so you end up with a two minus two cosine squared on this right side, and then I wanted it to equal one. So I moved everything over to the left side, and I got two cosine squared plus three cosine theta plus one is equal to zero. So if you substitute, I let a be cosine of theta. You don't have to, you could factor it straight from here. But you end up with 2a plus 1 times a plus 1 equals 0, or 2 cosine of theta plus 1 times cosine of theta plus 1 is equal to 0. So, or, so a, or cosine of theta, is equal to negative 1 half, and a, or cosine of theta, is equal to negative 1. If you do replace cosine of theta with something, make sure you then replace it back with cosine of theta, and we are solving for theta. So what angle gives you a cosine of negative 1 half between 0 and 2 pi? That would be 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. And what angle between 0 and 2 pi gives you a x coordinate of negative 1? That would be pi. So go ahead and try this one. Solve for theta with theta between 0 and 2 pi. So I use the same Pythagorean identity we used on the previous one. But because I have a linear sine, I'm going to make my cosine squared something with sine squared. So cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. So I replaced cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared, distribute the 2, set one side equal to 0. So you get 2 sine squared plus 5 sine of theta minus 3 is equal to 0. And then that factors. Again, you could replace sine of theta with an x or an a or something like that. Just make sure you replace it back at the end with a sine of theta. So if you solve this, you get sine of theta is equal to 1 half or sine of theta is equal to negative 3. So where between 0 and 2 pi does sine of theta equal 1 half? That would be pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6. And where between 0 and 2 pi does sine of theta equal negative 3? Well, if you remember from last chapter, the range of sine is negative 1 to 1. So sine of theta will never equal negative 3. So this will not give you any solution. So the only two solutions are pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So if you get something bigger than 1 or less than negative 1 for sine or cosine, that's not possible, and you have to just throw it out. If you get one that is between negative 1 and 1 but not on the unit circle, then you would just have to use your calculator and use inverse trig to solve for theta. So this was solving trig equations. Again, you want to isolate your trig function if there's just one of them, and then figure out what angle would make that trig function equation true. If it's one with squared trig functions, then you want to make it look like a quadratic. And some of those you're going to have to use identities. As we move through chapter 7, we're going to learn some new identities that could then be back applied to these trig equations as well.